Hello, it's me, Mitt Romney, and I'll be whatever you want me to be. You want health care? Check. You don't want health care? Check. You like the cops? I like the cops. You don't like the cops? Well, my favorite music is Will Smith, so I get it. I'll condemn anyone you want me to condemn. And if anyone has been unfairly condemned, I'll uncondemn them. I'll light my eyebrow hair on fire if you want me to. Please like me. You need a living wage? Well, I can't do that, but I can do a pencil dive into an open manhole cover with a comically <laughs> undersized umbrella if you want me to. That's as good as a living wage. Mitt Romney will do whatever. You want to smoke blunts with Romney and play FIFA while ignoring your side chick's needy text messages? I will be that pal slash fam. Whatever fam you want. You want me to suck your dick? You want me to cup the balls? You want me to do both while singing show tunes from Oklahoma? I'll do it, and I'll do it with a smile on my face. That's a Mitt Romney promise. Private Romney. Romney for money. Any old Romney will do. You want me to dress like your dad and tell you you're good while massaging your taint with my feet? I'll do it, and I'll look deeply in your eyes while doing it. So deeply into those pools of soulfulness, you'd swear that your eyes' dicks just got sucked. You want a place to hide your ex-wife's body? Come on down and use a plot of land on the old Romney compound. I'll grab a shovel and help you dig. But we have to watch out we don't hit the body of Seth Rich. Whoops, forget about that. You need a place to store your loose cables. I will take a ratcheting speculum to my anus and expand it to whatever circumference is required to accommodate your various wires. Will anybody else do this? Will anybody else walk around with an ass full of wires for you? No? No one else does this? That's the Mitt Romney promise. I'm not really a thing or a person, according to my doctor, but rather a loose field of electrons that feed on shallow approval. If not enough people like me, I'll die. Please like me. Please like me. Please like me. I'll suck your dick. Please like me. This message has been approved by Mitt Romney. And we have just entered the Romneyverse. Wow, that's pretty good. I'd vote for Mitt Romney. I'd vote for him, too. He's he's the, he's the next guy. So he, you said Mitt Romney's favorite artist is Will Smith? <laughs> Romney's <laughs> favorite artist is Will Smith. Okay. Checks out. Yeah, that's what he does. He's just so he just has a lot of desperation. Oh, he's eager. He's eager to please. He's uh, he wants to. He'll be. He's got a plan for parents now because the Democrats are coming out with competing plans for parents. Mm-hmm. Like giving them money. <laughs> money? You want money? Um, a special for guest, stupid Steve. Kids? Welcome, Steve. Hello. Hi, and good to have you again here, Steve. What do you think about money? Given parents, should we be giving parents money? Wow, what do I think about money? I think that the government should just fucking, you know, roll out the printers and just print it all and drop it from the helicopters, like helicopter Ben Bernanke. So if print they it back in the way. till the ink runs dry. Is your uh, is what you say? Print till the ink runs dry. Uh, Alex, uh, what do you think about money? Uh, While well, they're giving money to parents, it's funny that uh, the mega plan that is put forth by Romney is actually the most radical one. You get three hundred and fifty bucks a month if you have a kid, mm -hmm. and you get fourteen hundred right at birth. You know what fourteen hundred dollars buys? It buys a month and a half worth of diapers. It's great. <laughs> it does I don't know. I'm yeah. about to find you out. <laughs> uh, it's, I hope it's not that dire, but it's I still it's, not it's still much. not a ton of money. They don't even oh, give you that, like, fancy cardboard box that Finland gives you. Well, I guess it depends. Are you taking the $1,400, are you putting it in low-yielding government bonds or one of these <laughs> fancy new, uh, like, asset classes like GME or Dogecoin? Mm. You're right. You should mm. put it in Dogecoin. No. Yeah. No, you should not. That's a junk thing. <laughs> Do not. That's the other reason... <laughs> <laughs> That's the other reason we have Steve on, is because Steve actually does follow crypto. Local finance expert Steve. Yeah. He's our finance correspondent. Okay, so Steven, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. Why is Dogecoin any more of a piece of shit than Bitcoin? Oh, pure, purely because of um, how much it's worth. Because it's not worth anything. And it's also been, hasn't it been hacked a bunch more? I mean, I guess, like, I don't think it's been hacked. I don't actually know what the the underlying infrastructure for Dogecoin is, but I think... It's just in, a series of Shiba well, it was Inus started on treadmills. Yeah. That's what yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a doge sitting on top of a doge sitting on top uh, of a doge. <laughs> also, it started as a joke, I'm pretty sure. So, like, the intent behind it, and, you know... I'm oh, pretty yeah, skeptical no, I, of crypto in general, so... Hmm. 
But even I know you don't want to buy that Dogecoin. Yeah, I mean, I guess, like, it most definitely started as a joke, but at the end of the day, that's... Like, I think the the thing that gives currencies and these sort of, like, weird asset classes value at the end of the day is just, like, you have this weird sort of game theory thing going on where people just collectively agree that this thing has a value and because other people believe it has value yeah. then all of a sudden it kind of has value so hey if the the stupid doge meme is enough to get people to rally around this one stupid thing does that really make it any better or worse than bitcoin just because it was the first uh it kind of it kind of makes it like the tulip craze right i think where that like Tulips doesn't don't have a nation state or a good in I don't know a, I'm I'm not sure if that's the right way to think about it. Is there a um, fundamental difference between Dogecoin and Bitcoin besides the fact that one was started as a meme and the other one is like more shrouded in mystery? Um. So again, like I'm not super knowledgeable on the the infrastructure of Dogecoin, but I think based on like my understanding is like most cryptocurrencies have very similar protocols where they have some sort of proof of work mechanism where you have a lot of nodes all around the world operating the software and they compete to solve just arbitrarily stupid cryptographic puzzles and the first one that solves it gets to order the block of transactions and then when you when you make a transaction it's just whichever node mines the block so to speak um the is the one that on this <laughs> yeah. just fucking nerds who are just like oh we're gonna make a currency where you solve it with puzzles and it's also going to destroy the environment mm, well it's just gonna make gaming and uh, gaming annoying for the rest of the world forever you can't <laughs> Sorry, buy a it... video card anywhere i interrupted you steve so, ah. so but what what you're saying is that in your estimate, Doge? There is really nothing separating Dogecoin from Bitcoin in terms of a legitimate as a legitimate cryptocurrency platform. Yeah, I mean, I think like all of the 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 big cryptocurrencies have very subtle differences between them. But I could almost assure you that of all the people buying this shit, no one like really pays that close attention to it. I think a lot of it's just about the the speculation and momentum and i think bitcoin is just since they were the first crypto to the game everyone knows what they are they have the name recognition it, it, like in a lot of ways it's similar to gold where mm -hmm. gold has no i mean it, it sort of has inherent value in that you could use it for like electronics or it's a like, good conductor they say yeah you yeah, can make it, spaceships it, out of that shit man yeah, I mean, I'm like Leopold Stokowski. It's, it's good, good for conductor. your teeth. It's good for your teeth. That's true. Right. It does have the blink factor to it. So you could use it yeah. for like jewelry and like that sort of stuff. But you can put it on economically insensitive food. You can, yeah, you can make it um, Schlager gold. <laughs> <laughs> you have to get the Schlager. That's true. I hear that the shavings make a good uh, pizza topping also. Yeah. And it's good. You yeah. want to kick it up a notch. Gives you your daily yeah. recommended amount of gold in your day. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always struggling to get that recommended amount of gold. Man. And I like you, the idea. Of all people. You of that's, all people. <laughs> Both of you. That, that's anti Semitic. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> that's, that's not what I meant. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, Dogecoin. The other reason why we're talking about Dogecoin is because it's seen a rally recently, um, and it seemed somewhat influenced. We we weren't here last week, which is when we would have talked about it, because uh, I moved and Stephen got married. I got married. Woo! You should have been the one to reveal that. I'm sorry. Oh man, yeah, you. That's a faux pas. It's it was a fox pas. Mm -hmm. He could he could he could clean it up in post. No, I mean, we don't edit post. it. Um, Alex just owes me one now. And now, and now I owe Steve one. You have to send me um, your right nut. Okay. How much, to, how much? He wasn't doing a lot anyway. Yeah. How much Dogecoin does Alex need to give you to to right the wrong here? Um, $1. So that would be like, what, like 9,000 of them? 
No, I think it's only, <laughs> I think they're at like five cents each now. So what? Like 20 Dogecoin, yeah. Man. Let's um, take a look at well, CoinMarketCap.com. You know it's, it's going up. It's so not Dogecoin. real until it's physical. So Do they have physical Dogecoins yet? Seven, seven and a half cents per Dogecoin. Boom. Boom, that's what? a lot of doges that you're going. Uh. Yeah, so Dogecoin is this inconsequential, like, joke cryptocurrency. But now the joke the joke stock market has become a real thing because of GameStop. Last week, if we were around, we probably would have talked about the whole GameStonk thing. Yeah. Where a bunch of people on Reddit just noticed, one, one person noticed that a capital a capital fund took a lot of short positions against GameStop. And so they all bought GameStop on mass in order to bankrupt this one capital hedge fund, which was funny, and everyone liked it. Did it accomplish anything, or was it some sort of like populist victory? No. <laughs> the funny thing is, like, I bet a lot of the people who bought GameStop to trigger that short squeeze are now underwater because, you know, it went up, and they were like, "Yeah, cool, we." We bankrupted the hedge fund, and then it went down, and now it's now it's just down, and mm, yeah, they're all holding the bag. It's down now. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, hopefully, no one in, who's ba- uh, good is left holding the bag. But that was the fear at the time. Hmm. Yeah, we would have covered it. I would have expressed skepticism. Yeah, we we, we could have saved your your listeners a ton of money. Yeah, I bet that they all are holding a lot of game stonk. But I think more interesting than the GameStonk phenomena, which is just ultimately a bunch of redditors did a meme for three three days, which is which is in it uh, in and of itself unimpressive. But all of the fallout from it, which is Robin Hood closing the GameStonk, <laughs> the, the GameStonks, and then mm-hmm. getting sued on mass, which I think that's that's a very interesting angle. You know, as, Robin uh, Hood started problem. doing crazy stuff i think i saw that they sold someone's shares for them Mm -hmm. which is like you're gonna get sued if you do that i mean i feel like robin hood gets a lot of or got a lot of slack over this for the last couple days but i guess like given my understanding of the situation i don't think they really did anything like that wrong outside their messaging because like i think the, the short version of it is just like they're a startup at the end of the day and they're not that large and their business model just didn't take into account the idea that <laughs> like hey we're just gonna get like thousands of people just like shoveling in a shitload of money and just like all buying this one stock some of whom are doing it on margin which just like leverages up their business model and then they just like given the way that like uh stock transactions close they were just mm. sort of like left like holding the bag where they needed to put up a bunch of collateral that they didn't have. So, yeah. so it was, it was pretty much like, okay, well, we're either going to like go out of business here or we need to like get a billion dollars in loans and <laughs> <laughs> like try and figure this out. But now they're getting fucking sued. Now they have a bunch of class action suits by a bunch of fucking Reddit nerds. But see, the <laughs> cool thing for the rest of us is that now we're going to get lots of movies about this, um, mm-hmm. which is really great because it was the most exciting thing for about 30 minutes. And now we're going to turn that into two and a half hours. <laughs> yeah, Aaron Sorkin's going to write it. <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be all uh, deep fucking value sitting in his basement and uh, wearing his headband and writing on YouTube. Deep fucking value for the uninitiated is the Reddit celebrity who spurred on the initial GameStop investment. And he's he's a hey, popular he was, boy now. He was holding GameStop calls since uh, 2019. He's been in it for the long haul. Do you think True he's believer. sold? Do you think deep he's sold? Value. Uh, I think he sold some of it. I think he cashed out something to the tune of like thirteen million. Whoa! But for it was funny because like a while for a while on uh, Wall Street bets, he every day he would post his GME YOLO position, <laughs> and some days he would just be up like thirty million dollars, and then the next day be down twenty million dollars on what I, I think was originally like a fifty thousand dollar bet. How, how just, rich is this guy? Wow. Where uh, does he come from? 
He's just a fucking guy, and he lives in Boston. He, Ew. He has well, a, this, this is how the stock market should work. You should be able to both win and lose horrifying amounts of money without anyone telling you you can't, especially Elizabeth Warren. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the Futurama thing where they're in the robot insane asylum, and the robot Mad Hatter goes, change places, and then all the robots go, change places. I mean, I think the funny thing about that is that a lot of people on the left espouse the exact same thing that Stephen just espoused, which is like, yeah, sure, fuck it, let anyone like do whatever they want. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think the the whole reason Robin Hood had to, had to lock the trades in the first place was because of a regulation that was put in place after the 2008 financial crisis. Yeah, on, there you like, go. Capital requirements and stuff, so... So they won't allow stock manip- manipulation by the people, is right. what you're saying. So um, they rigged it. I mean, I don't think they'll allow <laughs> stock manipulation by anyone. It's just that when it happens on Wall Street bets, it's just so fucking like blatant and in your face of just people posting on this public message board, like, "Hey, let's try to make the stock go up really fast so we could tr- like trigger the short squeeze." Mm-hmm. It's not a conspiracy. It's a meme. Yeah, there is I guess no... the other thing is it's like it, it remains to be seen whether or not what they did actually is illegal or manipulation or if they just like the stock. As See, they... this isn't insider trading. This is a bunch of basement dwelling yeah. neat weirdos. It's outsider trading. Yeah, These someone are said outsiders. That. Yeah. Someone already said that, I think. I don't think it was Okay, that I'm not a creative person. Not I'm not what? Good, it's, it's also the most <laughs> obvious thing. You I also know. think what's funny about Robin Hood is the fact that their marketing is all we're putting stocks in the hands of the people. Don't yeah. ha, have you been uh, left behind by the finance community? Robin Hood's got your back. We're literally named after the guy who steals from the rich and gives to the poor. And yeah. then it's like, no, it turns out the, the, the corporation is not your friend. Yeah. <laughs> Who's whoa, not whoa. your friend? Whoa, whoa, whoa. We're not going to kill the sheriff of Nottingham. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, I'm gonna yeah. ask for permission to to hunt on his lands. Just gonna suck his dick a little. It's you know, <laughs> does the sheriff <laughs> sheriff of Nottingham want his dick sucked? Does does he want me to cut the balls? Does he want me to do both while singing show tunes from Oklahoma? I'll do it. Sorry, um, I mean, fat. I mean, I personally don't believe that Robin Hood did any particular wrongdoing, but there are a bunch of really fun conspiracy theories out there that. <laughs> That claim uh, that they did. Okay, tell me to what? Give me, lay one on me. I think like the main one is just like that. Um, so I guess like the main thing about Robin Hood is they they sort of like revolutionized the game by offering commission free trading, which is legitimately a cool thing mm-hmm. that they did. Yeah, but, and they make all their money off of selling like trade data to hedge funds, right? Even like more than that, I think they just literally redirect all of the trade flows to Citadel, which is this gigantic hedge fund that also owns Melvin Capital, the one that went bankrupt or, or near bankrupt. <laughs> oh, so, no. you, you, so you could it's see the conflict of interest. Yeah, yeah, so you could see the conflict of interest there, where uh, like one feasible thing that could have happened is Citadel would have just been like, "Yeah, we're not going to take any of these." Uh, GameStop buy orders, so you could go fuck them yourself. And then Robin Hood is like, "Well, I guess we can't do anything." Mm-hmm. Or that, like, maybe there was some like backroom dealing happening where they just told them not to do it. But I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just what I've learned over the course of my life is that the financial industry is hella, hella complicated. And no one really knows what the fuck is going on. Mm-hmm. So it's it's totally feasible that there's just like weird regulations and you know various like counterparty relationships that yeah have it all kind of make sense. Only one autistic Jewish guy in Brooklyn knows it all for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jaime Steinmetz. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know all the all the regulations and the laws and who gets paid first, but it, 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 it takes a while to access my knowledge. 
Yeah, that's that guy the, probably makes a lot of money. Dang. That's the guy, the, like the federal contract worker who knows how the whole regulation yeah. thing works? Well, he, he doesn't make the money. His exploitative Tom Cruise brother makes all the money. It's like a real Rain Man relationship. Mm. Damn it, Jaime. <laughs> you, you fucked it up again. Don't need to me. <laughs> Jaime and Josh Steinmetz. Uh, <laughs> The, the the brothers that control all financial regulation. Wow. Two, there's two Jews here. Don't kill me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that scene in the uh, two and one eighth Jews movie. There's yeah. two, two and one eighth Jews here. Correction. Um, the other the other why we started out with Dogecoin because the other part of the fallout from the whole game stonk thing was the fact that other. It's it's created this realm of optimism around other meme meme values around yeah. other meme. <laughs> it's so so Dogecoin, which started out as this joke cryptocurrency, um, has now been rallying heavily as a result of this like um, message board stock manipulation. So can you can you give us a little insight on that, Steve? Um, no. Okay. Well, uh, I mean, to be honest, I haven't seen much of like Dogecoin on Wall Street bets. Mm-hmm. So, like, it honestly wouldn't surprise me if there's some degree of market manipulation happening with this. Because, like, I think the same thing happened with silver, where last week silver was also rallying, and you had a lot of news articles coming out saying like oh yeah wall street bets is pushing silver now and then you go on wall street bets and half the posts on there are like we never said anything about silver like what the fuck's going on yeah silver is an op they're Mm. just pushing silver the big firms are pushing silver to get you to stop focusing on gamestop kodak is coming back well no seriously though seriously though like it seems like it actually was an op and it wouldn't surprise me if it was just like some or like a, a couple fucking hedge funds that just had silver positions and they made a post on Wall Street bets. So you're telling to... me the fintech community is now just hiring trolls to post on Reddit? Because <laughs> sign me up. I, I do mean, that for free. I mean, I kind of am saying that that might be <laughs> what's happening. Contact me at houseofdecline at gmail.com. I will troll anyone and I don't look at the replies. <laughs> I mean, Reddit definitely. Uh, there's a lot of native advertising on Reddit. Uh, one time, I was browsing through mildly interesting, as you do, mm-hmm. and I saw the, the just this blatant pro-Israeli propaganda disguised as a Soda Stream ad, and the, the the post was, "Look, my seltzer water is made by both Jews and Arabs working together." And there's like apparently on the Soda Stream box, there's like a little heart with the Israeli flag in it and says, this product was made by Jews and Arabs working together. And the person bought the fucking soda stream was like, huh, this, this, this seltzer water apparently is for peace. I'm going to post about it on Reddit mm-hmm. and I'm going to get a lot of votes. So, no, nah, I, feel, I feel that was definitely Benjamin Netanyahu's son as, like, a ploy to, <laughs> as a ploy to do pro-Israeli propaganda. Hmm. Yeah, you can't, you can't uh, believe yeah. everything you read on the internet these yeah. days. Yeah. Sometimes it's other countries trying to hack your election. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Blue Anon. What's that Who one? Are Blue, no, Blue Anon is Russia. That's what they believe. Yeah. They're all into Russia conspiracies. Yeah. Uh, what? That's a tie-in. Ding, 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 because some people were saying that the GameStop thing was a Russian disinfo campaign mm-hmm. to try to it's all about Russia. make chaos in our financial systems by making the stocks go up and down really wildly. It's, you know, we want to have our friend enemy distinction, but the, the curse of neoliberalism is that everyone is your friend, and that's how <laughs> it's supposed to work. As long as you're trading with them, they're your friend. And because we trade with everybody, everybody's our friend, even though we desperately want a friend-enemy distinction in order to, you know, guide our nation into a glorious future. Yeah, we have no direction without it. We, what are we doing in life? You know, we are in an existential crisis as a nation-state. 
Yeah, which is why, you know, I feel that that's why in the 90s, like Independence Day is a very 90s movie, tying it back into Mitt Romney's favorite artist, Will Smith. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I dig it. Because... Uh, we, you're at the end of history, right? You know, neoliberalism has solved everything. There are no more enemies left. So who's the big enemy? It's the aliens. It's the otherworldly force that the na- that all of the all of the stereotypes of the world have to come together in order to uh, defeat. <laughs> yes, that's the only way to truly kill the aliens. Just to get the most stereotypical type people you can find. Gather all the stereotypes together. Oh, man. Yeah, that's why we're never going to solve global warming because global warming isn't like uh, a singular race of living beings that we could apply the us versus them mentality to. We could it's try too the, abstract. We we could try the stereotype thing with the global warming. Yeah, uh, just like point at the sun and be like, "Fuck yeah. that guy." Just get all uh, the stere- get a get a stereotype of everyone in the room and have them like uh, vote on a plan. Yeah. Mm. That's the Captain Planet. That's literally what Captain Planet was. Yeah. We don't have all the stereotypes <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. Okay. So we can't do that, Joe. <laughs> oh, I'm, actually my God. Wondering, I'm actually wondering if maybe you could come with some like Q- QAnon-adjacent conspiracy theory that just pushes the idea that the Jews are causing climate change that there's this oh that <laughs> that they're caught co- that it's real but the jews are causing it yeah there's, there's a global model <laughs> of jewish pedophiles who are just trying to warm the planet because because yeah. uh, they're trying to get the children to take their clothes off because it's yeah, i think hot. that's that's very prescient though because <laughs> as climate change becomes more and more undeniable even to its most ardent skeptics they're going to have to find new ways to justify that, and I, I think blame the Jews is the path that they will take. Yeah. Because, you know, this is some sort of manipulation, you know, because weather manipulation, that's a classic conspiracy, you know. They're seeding the clouds in order to, you know, make us sad on Valentine's Day, and with that, they'll collect our sadness jism, which is what I call our, sweat. It's a preview of our Valentine's Day episode next week. Uh, tune mm-hmm. in. It's going to be a live episode. We'll be taking your calls. Uh, it's no. just going to be. It's just going to be these noises for two hours. Oh, oh no. Valentine's Day! Oh my! Oh jeez! Oh, oh god! It's just going to oh, be that. No. We it's should do that. it. Buckle up, fellas. That should be like Patreon subscribers only. <laughs> it's like you get Alex's ASMR, ASMR content, <laughs> mouth noises for your horny, horny midnight rituals. Looking forward to the uh, the live column section of that show, where it's like, mm-hmm. ah, Doctor Love, my girlfriend doesn't want to be intimate with me anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, what what could I? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. That's, so that is. That's it's great ASMR. Advice. Ass, sex, mouth, rectum. Oh. <laughs> you, you, gotta, you gotta set some atmosphere. <laughs> That's the trick. You have to set some atmosphere. Yeah. Ew. That's what we call. You gotta. You, Barry White is not enough. You gotta put on. You gotta put on dubstep remixes of Barry White, the sexiest music. <laughs> known to man Ooh, do they have that i gotta i gotta I'm check out that wobble i want to hear that will. wobble that low deep wobble with barry you gotta have that wobble is it can't get enough of your love <laughs> <laughs> is that a barry white song <laughs> that's the only one i know i also watched that an unfortunate ralph Bakshi. it's not an unfortunate it's actually a great movie but it's very controversial uh and i don't know how to feel about it uh, and whether I can even say the name of the movie, but fuck it, it's called Coonskin. It's an animated movie, and oh, no, it no, has no, Barry no. White in it. We can't, you can't say that. As one of the characters. <laughs> it's That's the name of the movie! <laughs> You're fired from the podcast. <laughs> it was made by a Jewish guy who thought he was black. Wow. Yeah, you're fired from the podcast. Sorry. That's, oh, God damn it. They're going to replace me with uh, my younger, hotter counterpart, Haley Joel Osment. Is he younger than us? No, he's older no, than I us. No, I think he's the same age. He's older. I think he's the same age. I think he's, he's 89. 
for me. I'm 89. I folks, 31. I think <laughs> I lost count in the 20s. So. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It, age is <laughs> just a number. Too, too drunk to remember. Lost count at like 27. <laughs> we're th- we're 30 something. Yep. As Jeffrey Epstein used to say, age is just a number. <laughs> yeah, and 30 is two is the highest it goes. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing higher than 30. Don't trust anyone over me, is what they used to say in the 60s. Well, I have don't trust news. anyone over I had one. Haley Joel Osment is 32. I had one oh, show no. note. I had one show note. Um, one show note? Doctor, my taint has gone missing. So, <laughs> like going to the doctor because your taint's gone. It's just a, like a hole there. There's a big gap. <laughs> right, yeah. You know the movie Gone Girl? It's it's that, but gone taint. <laughs> and it turns the, out your taint K, is, is orchestrated. It, is that Casey Affleck? And that, who is that? It's Ben Affleck. No, it's, it's the regular it's ben, Affleck. It's the regular, okay. Um, it should have been Casey. Isn't Casey more the problematic one because he beats yeah. women a, yeah. a Marilyn Manson styles? A la Marilyn Manson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's a that's crazy. Oh, uh, you're talking about the 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 several abuse yeah. allegations made by Evan Rachel Wood against. Uh, yeah, it turns uh, out old, Marilyn Manson's old. a bad influence. It turns <laughs> out that having a big a big dick won't supplant your violent urges. In fact, it may even make them stronger. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know that about his dick. Marilyn Manson allegedly's got a huge penis. Allegedly, because we he I, I allegedly got a huge allegedly. Penis. Yeah, we wouldn't want him to sue us over that. Yeah. <laughs> is He's it libeled. Is it natural, or do you think he he went the implant route? No, I think it's natural. I I don't think you know you can like confidently be Marilyn Manson without a big dick. You know, you need that bump. You know, you need that confidence bump in order to just exist as that guy, mm. and just be like that constantly. Do you think there's still goths like that? Yeah, yeah, by the fucking barrel full, absolutely. People love really? that. Uh, as long as teenagers e- exist, there there will be an aesthetic of superficial darkness. Hmm. We, we I love that. People still love that shit. Everyone likes superficial darkness. Is it still superficial darkness if he has a Prince Albert, though? Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Piercing question. They, yeah, because at, at that point, <laughs> at that point, I feel like you're you're just going all in. You're, you're like not... the... Oh, man. I like the idea of, like, a guy going to, like, the beauty section of, uh, of like, a Saks Fifth Avenue or something, uh, like the piercing section, and be like, just just whipping it out and be like, oh, yeah. do you do these? No, you have to. <laughs> I saw someone in my local subreddit ask where to get one, and a disturbing amount of people replied. <laughs> like, oh, I had one down here. <laughs> they were great. <laughs> I'm like, what? You get it at Charlie's Cox Bikes. Oh, <laughs> down, man. Down on, down on Marine Avenue. Charlie's Cox Bikes. You can't miss it. Do All of the one? men are doing the waddle dance coming out of the, the shop. Should we all get just them? Don't... Maybe we should all get <laughs> should, them. Should we all? Should we all become eternal bros by the... becoming Prince Alberts? <laughs> yeah, with like the show logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're right. <laughs> and then, but the pro- tragedy strikes when we like uh, get a powerful neodymium magnet between the three of us, and yeah. we gotta. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and then our, our, our dicks are united forever. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Wow. Did you guys see Gorilla Glue Girl? No, it's Gorilla Glue Girl. What's Gorilla I don't, Glue? I, Girl? I don't. I don't think I want to know the answer to this, but no. Gorilla Glue Girl uh, was on on TikTok, and she ran out of hairspray <laughs> and used Gorilla Glue to spray her hair. Not knowing how strong it was, and then had to eventually go to the hospital. <laughs> the hospital. <laughs> yeah. What dissolves gorilla glue? Only like crazy stuff that they have at the hospital that like you can't get normally. <laughs> That's like spittle grade salt. <laughs> yeah. Just like weird paint thinner stuff. Yeah, I think they have, that's what they're gonna have to do. Um, 
Wait, so no. why did they just do that? Why didn't she just shave her head? Don't I don't know. I don't it know. All? It was like the way it worked, it was like really close to her head. Uh, did so. she like dilute the gorilla glue and so she could spray it on her hair? No, there's such a thing as gorilla glue spray. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just you just sprayed a bunch of glue. Oh my god. No, but that's that is an astonishing thing to behold and it makes me very nervous. Yeah. It yeah. was uh, astonishing almost to just, behold. It looked like it yeah. sucked. She was in pain. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was warning everyone not to do it. And I mean, I guess it's not as bad as, like, the whole uh, American Pie. I was just pie. about... Yeah, just about to. What, sorry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the American Pie 2. Uh, it's like, oh, the Gorilla Glue's right next to my lube for jacking off. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jason Biggs. Jay, the, the famously not Jewish Jason Biggs uh, was jacking Man. off with glue. You were res- I'm, I would be resentful of him for stealing Valor. You know? Yeah, he's stealing Jewish identity just by existing. <laughs> he is. Stop ap- stop appropriating Jewish culture, Jason Biggs. That ha- that happens in New York. <laughs> that all goes the, to Italians in general. Yeah, and it happens yeah. to Italians. They must be they yeah. must be furious at us Anglo's. That your culture is being appropriated by uh, road signs that say like you're now entering Brooklyn. Forget <laughs> about it. <laughs> I like the idea of a bunch of Brooklyn podcasters going to like do, doing the Sopranos Jersey tour and just gawking at Jersey guys to be like, "Oh look, there's one of them," and they'd be like, "Get out of here, you stugats, you fucking bitch!" Oh, he's saying things to me. I love it, just like in the show with Polly, because everybody loves the Sopranos, including me. I'm I am that person. Oh, did you finish it? How far? Yeah, I finished the Sopranos. Yeah. It's so good. And then you it's started so it. You started it over right again, right? You've... Yeah, I'm just, it's, I've been watching it constantly. you got to rewatch right after you watch it. That's the mm-hmm. best way to really absorb it. Yeah, you got to pick up all the subtle little cues, you know, like every time, like hidden in every shot, there's actually like a little guy. There's actually a little <laughs> tiny guy who's telling you to set fires, you know, so <laughs> you got to look out for that guy in The Sopranos, you know, and in every show that guy is, you know. Oh, <laughs> uh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know how in every you, you know how in every tele- <laughs> it's the Easter egg in every television wow. show. The little guy that says, "Hey, buddy, yeah. hey, buddy, you, uh, you know you should set some fires. You should set a little bit of fire in the year and then." It's, it's an Easter egg, you know, yeah. like how and in it's in every show, right? Mash, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. The yeah. final episode of show the Mash, you had a, just. A little guy telling you, mm, you know what makes your dick real hard? Fire. <laughs> Ooh, man. Just that little guy. Um, and uh, you can catch him everywhere. It's a uniting television philosophy. Mm. His IMDb page is pretty crazy. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. The little yeah, guy. He's got more. <laughs> it's in a lot of stuff. <laughs> the little guy that tells you to uh, light fires. Yeah, uh, arson boy. I I don't want to give him a name. Uh, I was thinking about going through Eric Roberts' entire filmography, just like as like um, a challenge to myself. Like if Eric Roberts has been in it, like if it's a movie, I wouldn't do his television appearances because you know I'm not insane. But he's like appeared in 600 movies, so I <laughs> I think I'd be covered. You could uh-huh. do you could do the Eric Roberts filmography podcast. Okay. And I'll be a perfect irony muffin, just like everyone expects me to be. An irony muffin? Yeah, I'm an that? irony muffin. I don't think we, we can just let that one go. Um, who's Eric Roberts? <laughs> <laughs> who's, what? Who's Eric Roberts? Eric Roberts is Julia Roberts' brother. He's a famously prolific character actor. He's what been is... in everything. Oh, this guy. He's oh, I didn't know he's Julia Roberts' brother. He's Julia really? Roberts' brother. Yeah. What really? is his most prominent role? G- <laughs> uh, um, what would I know him of, from? I'm trying to think of like a good Eric Roberts role, and it's not coming to me because that is the that is the genius of Eric Roberts. He just disappears into the background. You don't mm. even notice he's there. I'm what's sure like what, what's like a Eric Roberts role? Uh, a er, uh, 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 he's like has a bit part as a mafia guy in the Dark Knight. 
That um, is true. He he is Carmine Falk. He's some sort of thing in The Dark Knight. Uh, Eric Roberts. What God? He's a he's a old lesbian looking motherfucker. Sort of. You know how when old guys get old, they start looking like old lesbians. Um. Oh, he was in Cecil B. Demented. That's fun. <laughs> so That's whatever. a fun thing. <laughs> That's a good movie. Uh, what's he in? Uh, the Expendables. The Claw. Actually, I just want a list. So, Eric Roberts in 2012. These are all the movies that he did in 2012. This is one year. Oh, no. Are you going to go these through are just the whole movies. Oh, no. But this is just one year. It's not... It, but I want to illustrate one year of work. We'll link Silver to the case, filmography. Deadline. The Dead Want Women. Snow White. A Deadly Summer. Blood Work. The Night Never Sleeps. Stealing Las Vegas, Beyond the Trophy, The Mark, The Child, Worth, The Testimony of Johnny St. James, <laughs> Christmas in Compton, Mary, The Shining Night, Mission, The Prophet, and I Vote. So he, he's like a real-life Troy McClure, is what I say. I really like Worth, The Testimony of Johnny St. James, in which you may remember me as Hickey from Worth. The testimony of Johnny St. James. Yeah. He's in some he's got some good titles here. In 2016 he was in Sorority Slaughterhouse, which yeah. sounds great. Uh, yeah, and would... Oiled Up mm-hmm. <laughs> and Gender Bender, where he's, he plays Kent Skillman. He's in He's the Dean hum- Whitman in Sorority yeah. Slaughterhouse. He he's in the Human Centipede the Three. <laughs> he's in the Human Centipede Three. <laughs> Oh, I bet. Yeah, that's he's he's in everything. Yeah, I guess apparently he, he was also in the Expendables, and I'm really disappointed looking at the movie color that doesn't say like Stallone, Statham, Lee, Roberts, Austin, <laughs> <laughs> Roberts. What? I mean, yikes! Why is he? Who is? Why? What? Why are we talking? He's just about constantly. Him? He just loves acting. He loves oh. acting so much that in 2019 he appeared in Lone Star Deception, The Unlikely Good Samaritan. IRL, Induced Effect, Billboard, It Wants Blood, Hollywood, Wood spelled W-O-U-L-D, Black Bear, The Savant, 79 Parts, Director's Cut, A Karate Christmas Miracle, The Evil Insider, Monster Island, The Turnaround 2, 90 Feet From Home, The Immortal Wars, (laughs) it just goes on. (laughs) These are like movies that you just put into a generator. How do these even exist? (laughs) Who's bankrolling these? They don't even have links on Wikipedia it's, that they're that's so LA, obscure. That's L.A., baby. That's L.A. What are you talking about? Who's bankrolling it? An entire city of like 8 million people. More. <laughs> it's also Jaime and Josh Steinmetz. <laughs> they're also the only guys that understand Hollywood, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Hollywood equals money, baby. Yeah. yeah, that's QAnon fixates on Hollywood because it's just it's just a lot of QAnon, I guess, is old fashioned anti-Semitism. That's where like the Hollywood pedophilia comes from, because Hollywood is triple parentheses codes words for mm, the Jews. Triple parentheses codes words. These coded mm-hmm. words for Jewish. I the have... Jewish. <laughs> I have always wanted to read Protocols of the Elders of Zion. That's <laughs> a fun yeah. Read. You've always I picked wanted... up some pretty good tips you can for get Protocols. The, yeah, you can get the PDF, man. You just got to know which uh, organizational websites to go on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you, need <to laughs> find, you need help finding some websites. You Hey, you look new around here. Uh, you need help with finding some good websites to go on. Get some materials to read. <laughs> hey, we got some. We got some old Nat Geos. And we got some protocols the friend, of the elders of Zion. The, the friendly KKK <laughs> guy who's trying to get people to join, and people are just like, "Get out of here!" <laughs> you might want to go on this website. Like, push him in a corner. Can I interest you in this this copy of Protocols of the Elders of Zion drawn by somebody that draws like Peanuts creator Charles Schultz? I was watching on YouTube <laughs> some shocking footage it was from nineteen I think eighty seven of Forsyth County, Alabama, which is I think or it's either that or Forsyth County, Georgia, I think and that's where Marjorie Taylor Greene is from. And they that's mm. when they desegregated in nineteen eighty seven. 
Jeez. <laughs> and they were having a crazy protest. <laughs> And there oh was a lot God. of white people saying the N word in a mean way, not in a rap way, like, <laughs> in a mean way. And not, and, not in a get fired by the New York Times kind of way. Yeah, in, <laughs> in yeah, a they, mean way. Yeah, in the in the real like they meant it. So it's and it's crazy how 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 recent that was, um, and it mm. explains a lot about Marjorie Taylor Greene because she. <laughs> She's like of the age of some of the teenagers in the video. Ghostbusters 2 had just come out. Prince was on the radio and we had just desegregated. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> How was your high school in 1987? Yeah. That uh, that version of Stranger Things I don't remember. <laughs> it's Stranger Things, but they're in a desegregating Arkansas town. And the real upside down is racism. <laughs> oh, I have one other thing that I wanted to. Oh, right, the New York Times guy. What new? Did, and the so New the York new... Times guy said the N word. <laughs> right. So this is. I don't know. If, here's the background. I have a take on this that maybe people haven't necessarily thought of. But the New York Times guy is fired because he. Are you drinking coffee straight <laughs> out of a Chemex? <laughs> Are you drinking coffee straight out of a pitcher? Are you drinking Diet Coke straight out of a pitcher? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Uh, Boy folks, needs to get his caffeine. It's incredible. What is Who's that? The New York Times guy. Is that coffee? Go back to the New York Times guy. Ignore is that me. Coffee? <laughs> it's Are coffee. Are you drinking coffee? <laughs> it's <What> coffee. You... <laughs> it's coffee. I'm dr- it's like in the coffee and cigarettes you movie. Drink you drink coffee and the rhythm. Straight from, from the coffee straight, pot. Straight out of the diner feel. Like yeah. <laughs> That's um, how you get it. New York Times Who's guy. This New York Times guy. Um, some guy who worked for the New York Times for like forty years was fired because he apparently said the N word on a trip to Peru with some teenagers, and everyone's <laughs> like, "I can't believe." They were either like, "I can't believe he did it," or "I can't believe they fired him for this," and no one is like questioning about how he's on a trip to peru with some teenagers is my who, thing it's like oh one steamy night in peru sort of vibes who, who snitched <laughs> yeah was it the teens yeah it was the teens they all like <laughs> banged up teens. on him and, and snitched on him and said he said racist stuff um uh, i thought but, he was tra- he was like trying to be cool by being racist to the teens i don't know maybe <laughs> um good for the teens taken out of el- an elderly person um <laughs> i like the idea that these teens like they're going to the new york times was like this man just just fingered all of us at machu picchu for like 20 days in a row and he also said the n-word it's like he said the n-word <laughs> In some cultures, what they do with the elderly is they surround them in a circle and kill them with spears, um, which is also a good way to do it. But we do it a little differently here with our teens and our elderly. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, we surround them in a circle and finger them at Machu Picchu? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we finger blast them at Machu Picchu. <laughs> finger blasting at Machu Picchu. Yeah, I'll, I'll take the, the midsummer treating of elderly where you just jump off a cliff exactly Mm -hmm. yeah that's amazing i like i like that movie that movie's fun and feminist you go girl (laughs) you get it (laughs) um yes some people's interpretation of that movie is that actually which i think is very funny that this is a girl power movie (laughs) Mm. (laughs) yeah this is not really i i i walked out of the the theater Going, this is the the the, the rom com movie of the summer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's funny. It Alex absolutely was saying is. It was funny before when we talked about it. How funny it is! I didn't find it it's that a funny. funny movie. Funny. <laughs> it's a funny movie. It's they're tripping. He's having a because I I like the idea of I like it when um, movies are this outsized, exaggerated expression of. Uh, like a petty social grace like the movie mother 
And Darren Aronofsky in general is weird, but I really like the movie Mother because I feel it just works on the level of, like, I can't get these fucking people, these rude-ass house guests, to leave my yeah. house. Yeah, that's and what Mother is. on that frustration. Mother is really about people who won't leave and who overstay their welcome more than any biblical stuff that's going on. Yeah, well, the biblical stuff, it is about that, but that part of it sucks and is stupid. And the it's like Darren Aronofsky like sucking his own dick. The anger from unwanted house guests is biblical, and I think that's what the movie <laughs> teaches us. That is true. Yeah. And uh, so that's what I like about Midsommar. It's it's like another movie where like oh you accidentally touched the good china and then you get killed for it. You know you, it's like going to your your in laws house and you know they have all these rules that you don't know and so like the outsized punishment for breaking those making those social faux, faux pas I think are funny. Uh, and that's why I like Midsommar and that's why I like Ari Aster. He's good. He made two good movies. Yep. Let's hope for a third. Um, there's going to be a new uh, Adam Curtis thing pretty mm. soon. Have you, are, you, are you hip to it? Do you know about it? What's going on? A new mm. Adam Curtis documentary type deal is going to come out pretty soon. Are you Curtis pilled, Steve? I, I'm like half Curtis pilled. I like maybe broke one of the pills up and railed it. But well, now <laughs> what? Now I'm just excited to finally, uh, you know, fig- figure it all out once again. I uh, mean, it's all connected to Gaddafi. I I <laughs> think that Adam Curtis is a bit of a hack, but he also makes very fun movies. Uh, how do you think? He, why do you think he's a hack? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just like watching a lot of his movies. He just seems to definitely draw on the conspiratorial mindset and at least in um hyper normalization for example like i thought it was a good movie and it was definitely fun to watch but i forget exactly like what parts of it i disagree or like the, i think there were like some parts of it around the early financialization of new york and just like how in the 70s they we're in this debt crisis and like wall street took over and there were some things in there that he was talking about that i remember thinking were either wrong or he just sort of framed it in a really weird way and i find whenever he's talking about things that i actually know about i always sort of get the impression like okay like maybe he's not like outright lying but he it definitely seems like he's misrepresenting it or just frame it, like using weird cinematic techniques to frame this in such a way that well yeah smart. using it to to support his thesis which is Adam Curtis's general thesis is that at least from hypernormalization is that we became so navel gazing and so inwardly focused that we ceased to be able to combat you know the larger social problems of neoliberalism I think that that's sort of like what uh, hypernormalization focuses on, how like, you know, Patti Smith was like the dissolution with the hippie movement and the idea that it didn't really accomplish anything, you know, made uh, artistic people in the intelligentsia turn into sort of like passive observers, sort of amused at the chaos that was unfolding before them, as opposed to activists who were attempting to do anything about it. But I don't know. Adam Curtis seems like the type of guy that's also annoyed by activists. So it's like, I don't think you can win with Adam Curtis. It's just all bad, and it keeps getting worse. And yeah. then there's some ambient... I just like I just like trip-hop, okay? I just want a venue for trip-hop. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree with him on that in that respect. But I think maybe the thing that sort of irks me is just, like, his whole aesthetic is pretty... Um, propagandistic yeah but he'd be the first to admit that i think he's like he's making propaganda movies Mm -hmm. yeah i mean there's nothing wrong with that but it's just you kind of need to like go into it with that mindset of like okay you're just essentially watching propaganda that might be more accurate than most other propaganda like it's gonna be accurate than pandemic or something and also more entertaining it's it's also it's it's a weird his ideology if you had to pin it down is 
kind of a weird form of socially conservative socialism, which is a very <laughs> interesting, uh, interesting place to be. I'm sure, don't pillory me, I'm sure that's a, a wrong assumption, uh, that's a wrong uh, appraisal of what he is, but... Uh, uh, yeah, there is kind of like this idea that there was a golden age. And I feel like a lot of like old lefty commies have this idea is that there was this golden age of leftist organizing that has long since passed or that uh, culture has created this sort of brave new world like Soma atmosphere around everything that we are unable to summon the spirit of like Lenin or Eugene Debs or people like that. And like that, that actual material practical organizing is gone. Um, and people want to harken back to the past in order to get it back. So I think in that respect, Adam Curtis is sort of like backwards looking. And a lot of people who are like subtle, subtle tanky ish people, even the post left one could argue is is a backwards looking movement because it's saying in alienating socially conservative people we are you know we're we're taking class solidarity out of the equation uh and i think that is the argument of the post that left a lot of the time is that we are we, like the the fucking internet blue-haired fucking woke scold sjw's are alienating this group of people who should be amenable to our cause because it's in their economic interest and because we're so focused on fighting a culture war we are alienating these people but in that you are saying we should be more accepting of those who are socially conservative and so that's where i think adam curtis ultimately comes down he's sort of like if you if you i don't know if he's like a full-on greenwald post-left guy but uh he's dead out. I don't know. There's some overlap in their opinions. Damn, a fiery takedown of Adam Curtis now. And I love no, I love Adam Curtis. I think he's right on a lot. <laughs> now a crater of a former artist after being destroyed by Alex. Uh, with destroyed no. with facts and logic. With facts and logic, we have to no, add. We have I, to no, add him. We'll Adam, Adam, contact. champ. We'll champ. contact him for I'm, a response. Um, moving on, Alex. I'm dying, Alex. <laughs> Why did you kill me with your facts and logic? <laughs> well, I was just thinking, would, would um, people think he's so smart if... Imagine he didn't have the voice he had and instead he had Michael Moore's voice. Would people think... <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. began to look inward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's all because of the British accent that gives him, it lends him a lot of credence. The British accent adds 10 IQ points on perceived IQ. Well, his study. British accent adds 10. Some British accents are like, <laughs> Oh, I'm Jimmy Wallaby. <laughs> Have you never seen it for a point? It don't come and die to me. Yeah, say, oh, how's, say, the fifth, you're, how's that is so sophisticated? Say bottle of water with that accent. Bottle of water. No. <laughs> Would you like to buy a bottle of water? A bottle of water. 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 I mean, it's funny, though, because I think, like, Michael Moore does have a a sort of similar filmmaking style as Adam Curtis, but I do like Adam Curtis more than Michael Moore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michael Moore is... Um, well, it's funny that Adam Curtis like sort of laments or complains about people people's detachment because what makes his documentary so cool is that he is like I'm a cool guy I'm detached I'm just like diagnosing the end of the world I'm not gonna do anything about it but am I the most correct about it Yeah, yeah I'm Adam Curtis Yeah I mean like I think like I think Michael Moore is more passive aggressive about it though whereas Adam Curtis just sort of lays it all out. He doesn't make any bones about it. He's like, this is what I think. Here it is. And Michael Moore sort of beats around the bush a little. And it's it's not quite as obvious that he's making propaganda. Yeah. Man, Michael Moore. Michael Moore is okay. You know, I feel like there was a lot of... In, in the course of my political development, I had a lot of feelings about Michael Moore. And now I've eventually landed on, I don't mind you loved Michael him? Moore. You were in love with him? Well, first I loved him, and then I hated him as a college libertarian. You guys broke up. I was like, Michael Moore misrepresents the facts. And then when I 
was then I started liking him again, and now I'm like, yeah, he's fine. He's he doesn't do anything. Okay. Like I I don't think he's a hindrance to the movement of leftism. I don't think he's like turning people off. In fact, I think Michael Moore probably more than a lot of people um, is able to cross over to working class people because he looks like one of them. <laughs> All right, well, um, I'm planning on taking him down with a sex scandal. So watch out. <laughs> Like he was caught fucking a turkey sandwich or yeah. something like that. <laughs> he has sex with food. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, that's what fat people do. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you saw it in Last Tango in Paris. He couldn't fuck without butter. He literally couldn't fuck without butter. That's what happens when you get fat. Got to yeah. incorporate food into everything. I mean, I guess according to Roger, it isn't uh, like dead rabbits more his speed. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, sick ref. Is that a ref from the movie? Yeah, there was. Uh, I actually, actually like Michael Moore's movies, even though I think they're sort of propagandistic. They, but, of course, uh, they're propaganda. Yeah, no, but there was there was this one scene I remember from Roger and me where just the town that he's in i guess like flint is just decimated economically and there's yeah. just one woman that makes ends meet by uh selling dead rabbits and she just takes these dead rabbits on her lawn and she's just skinning them for her customers and michael moore cool wow yeah it's pretty pretty metal okay yeah that is true that's metal. S- something, something, something. <laughs> Flint's uh, water supply and heavy metals. Pun. But um, uh, yeah. Uh, man, I want to have that conversation with that guy. It's like they say there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, but really there's only about five effective ways. <laughs> you want to start from the tip of the nose now. <laughs> I think that guy's in Congress now. I think he's a. That's a congressman now. I'm sure Marjorie Taylor Green knows how to skin rabbits. <laughs> uh, she should have started a YouTube channel. I would watch it. I would subscribe. Marjorie um, the Gathering. Yeah, like the and the um, Lauren Boebert should start should be live streaming from like a like gla- her. She should get those Google glasses and live stream and have like a little reticule. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she can just whip out her concealed carry because per, uh, she got that concealed carry permit from the dc police you see that no. fantastic the dc police gave um lauren bobert a concealed carry permit so she can wear her sidearm concealed everywhere she goes in dc now can she take it into the halls with her i uh, think so i think she can try yeah that's... they're allowed to carry it in the halls anyway i don't know if she can take it into like the room where they vote but i think she can yeah that's scary that's i mean that's good that's right they all should every <laughs> single one of them mm-hmm. that would be well, i mean, remember I, f- I feel like you got to go either zero or a hundred on this it doesn't work if only one person's but so consider this steve when you have a gun in a in a building it just raises the chances of it, of someone being shot by that gun by like 400 percent, which is mm-hmm. why if they all have one they <laughs> might just take care of themselves you know yeah no that's that's what i'm saying you either gotta go zero percent or a hundred percent maybe the, we can just solve our problem organically this way and the congress can just shoot each other that's that's the ideal outcome mm-hmm. in my opinion well for, for a while I think was <laughs> no i think for a while that was like one of the main arguments for second amendment rights coming out of uh coming from the right and libertarians like oh well if everyone had a gun then everything would be so much safer like if all these these schools are getting shot up if all the kids just had guns and the teachers had guns then there would be no no issue, and then a lot of schools got shot up, and then I think they probably <laughs> shut the hell up. Yeah, after they realized oh, that that's an incredibly stupid idea. I well, I think it would definitely make life more exciting. We we are having a problem with people's general sense of purpose, and I think you know, underrated aspect of school shootings make you feel like you're in a movie. Who doesn't like the movies? You know. <laughs> and if Did we carry guns all the time 
then you know the stakes would definitely be raised and you know we Did wouldn't have that this new societal movie? on we you see that new movie about the school shootings coming from um ben shapiro it was it wasn't made by them it's being distributed by daily wire they picked it up because okay. it is it, it reenacts something like you said steve where they're they're shooting some good guys shoot a school shooter some good guys with <laughs> that guns movie get a bad sounded, guy with gun. cool it sounded crazy i listened mm-hmm. to the review episode of chapo they reviewed it of charpo chicken um, wing yes charpo chicken house um, Char- charpo chicken wing yeah they reviewed that movie. It sounded crazy. I might check it out, but I don't know. It was uh, all right. We might we might review that. But what's it called? I Run, ch- hide, just, kill. Yeah, just check out the Chapo episode. Don't watch the movie. I don't think. Mm-hmm. But school the right shooters. wingers are making school shooter movies now. That's crazy. I can't think. Do, uh, uh, who is like a left wing school shooter? I can't really think of a left wing school shooter. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I Dylan try not and to think Eric about were Nazis. They you were, shouldn't think they about were, them. <laughs> they suck. Losers. Dylan and Eric. My, my buds, Dylan and <laughs> They're losers who did not have senses of humor. <laughs> I, I like the idea of there was a guy who was out sick the day of Columbine, and he just, like, through sheer ignorance, like, never it never clicked with him. And then, like, one day he's just looking at a yearbook, and it's like, oh, man, I remember Dylan and Eric. What happened to those guys? And, oh man really whoa <laughs> oh you could you think you wouldn't this guy was so checked out he didn't notice yeah he didn't notice all the funerals he was just you okay. know man i was just doing a lot of devil sticks at that time i, I wasn't really paying attention oh, the stone the, the jeff spicoli the stoner kid yeah d- didn't notice columbine happening <laughs> yeah I, I was smoking blunts with dylan and eric and man <laughs> jesus that um well i guess it's been long enough to make jokes uh about can tragic, make columbine jokes tragic 20, situation 20 years mm-hmm. all of the teens from columbine are now sad adults with mortgages and, yeah, and they, children they, and they they've done follow-ups they're all messed up all of them they're all sad yeah even even Janie Gregg's Mm-hmm. Especially her. Oh no! Yeah. They got Janie. <laughs> they got her. She was the happiest one of them all. Oh my God. And those bastards, those Nazi bastards, Dylan and Eric. Do you think doing active shooting drills is fucking our kids up? Oh man. No. Uh, I think it's fucking our kids down. No. And it's we should fine. do it more. You can't fuck kids up. They're already fucked up from the get go. Yeah, their parents fuck them up. Their parents do more damage nah, by giving genes. them all of their just sexual pathologies. Everyone, everyone gets bad genes. We're all we're all messed up. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. true. Don't worry about it. You can't win. We we should do Gattaca, but instead of like making everyone like super soldiers, we should instead like give everyone like just a small disability. That yeah. We should. That's what we should use gene therapy for. <laughs> so that no one is better than anyone else. Yeah, we're exactly. All equal. We all have yeah. one thing wrong with us. Okay, yeah. here's, here's a question. So prior to our generation, the on top of fire drills, schools did the whole like Cold War duck and cover. Mm-hmm. The Russians are going to nuke us out of existence, so you better hide under your desk drill. Right. And then mm-hmm. our generation did active shooting drills. What do yeah. you think the next generation of weird school drills is going to be? Uh, uh, TikTok bombs. Mm. <laughs> TikTok, a bunch of terrorists start using TikTok for its ironic name to do suicide bombs in schools. So beware of the TikTok bombers. I guess. Yeah, I mean, new, I could actually new, see nuclear uh, ones again. Probably those ones will probably come back. <laughs> I could actually see a, a trend of sort of like suicide club type high school yeah figure. yeah they we're just like you've seen that movie you've seen the japanese movie suicide club yeah just like but maybe with us it's just like these like infectious memes like get yeah. you to buy GameStop and then kill yourself yeah do- doge suicide <laughs> bro have you heard of doge suicide it's the best you kill yourself doge 
<laughs> oh no, don't meme. If you make suicide into a meme, then they'll all die. Don't do it. Bro, invest in suicide and hold. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna stick into those big hedge funds by investing and in killing ourselves. No, that's a bad investment. You'll Diamond die. hands. <laughs> no. Diamond hands. Diamond <laughs> hands. Commit to suicide. It's a safe bet. We have a never-ending supply of it. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I think there is an end to this suicide supply. Uh, we need to not if we not if our suicide rate is less than our birth rate huh. and death rate. Wow, these are such deep thoughts. Um, <laughs> we need to invest in suicide. I'm not going to short suicide again like a fucking pussy. <laughs> Wait, when? How do you make money from every time someone commits suicide? Um, you it's just a, you just bet on it. You just bet whether oh, the bet suicide numbers are going to go up or down. Oh, I see. And if, when they go it. up, like people who are who are in on the bet make money, but then you're dead and, and you can't take it with you. I th yeah. I think there are actually death markets on uh on Ethereum where mm. you could bet on certain people dying which is obviously problematic because if you bet enough money on someone dying then you, it just makes sense to put a hit out on them and then yeah. they get killed and you make a bunch of money well yeah. you know it's gotta they gotta make it look natural you know that's the key well that's why it's can't nice that uh, it's untraceable it's an untraceable currency so no one can tell when there's contracts out and no one can trace it which is an argument against these untraceable digital currencies. Man. For, for crime stoppers. Uh, like, how will Batman be able to trace Dogecoin? And the Joker uses Dogecoin. And now that everyone's so dang Jokerified, the police are going to have an awful lot of problems with bank robberies now that everyone's using Dogecoin. Think of the consequences. It's no good, sir. It's Joker coin. <laughs> They've jokerified cryptocurrency. Yeah. Oh god, it's spreading like a meme. That's why I'm opposed to Dogecoin because it is the jokerified cryptocurrency. <laughs> so I'm like ideologically opposed to them being jokerified. Oh my god. Hey. Hey. That's funny because uh, if Gary Glitter were out of prison today, he would be using a lot of cryptocurrency for who knows what. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh my god. Fucking what what are some funny what are some funny hallmarks of the cryptocurrency community, Steve? What do you notice are some funny traits or some some shared trends in the crypto community? Um I think the funniest one is so right now on Ethereum there is this really big trend of <clears throat> of what's called NFTs or like non-fungible tokens which is is really basically like people say they're putting art on the blockchain but really all they're doing is they're uploading art to the internet in a way that literally anyone can access and do whatever the hell they want with it and they i guess they just hash it and they like technically the hash has an owner so you could like cryptographically prove who quote unquote owns the piece so okay. this has led to a lot like some cool art but also a lot of really not very good art and i imagine it's mostly furry stuff is it mostly furries it's there's not zero furries <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's, it's oh, not it's not nothing, but it's I like it's it's mostly not furries though. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good. Okay. That's um, nice. Is it is it like cubism? It's <laughs> it's mostly just like hey, that's pretty trippy kind of stuff. Um, oh, like um, who's that guy that did all of Tools Art? Alex Gray. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a lot of stuff that's sort of like that. There is there is some legitimate uh some legitimately cool just like algorithmically generated art. But I think the funniest stuff I've seen is you get a lot of art that sort of reminds me of Soviet propaganda, but instead of like Lenin and a hammer and sickle, it's just like 
a, a really muscular man with like the Bitcoin logo <laughs> as his face. Oh. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> And it's just yeah, like all funny. this like really like glorifying uh, of like Bitcoin and Ethereum and yeah, we'll make cards. number go up. That's good. Yeah. No, art is very important. If like all of Bitcoin's value is is just hype, you know, is just hype and computing power, and you've got computing power figured out, then you know you you start you you need to go on the hype market. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's where like a lot of Elon Musk's value comes from. The fact that he's able to be both like a source of hype for old money investors and retail investors alike. You know, usually you it's one or the other because you're like a Coke guy and you alienate retail investors because uh, you just have that, you, you have that personality or you, you invest in real boring stuff. But Elon Musk is able to, you know, enchant that old guard and he... also, you know, be like, I love awesome sauce and pickle Rick. And so all of you guys on Robin Hood will like me as well. Hey, the, the man knows how to meme. And that's what makes him an mm -hmm. effective CEO in the yeah. 21st century. It's true. But it's such shallow memeing that is so, it's so clearly cynical and manipulative. It's but I guess it's manipulating it the markets. He's manipulating the markets every time. If you interpret, if the, because it's always double layered. So his memes are always to manipulate the stock market in his favor. Mm -hmm. so I'm really waiting for the. I'm really waiting for the day where the SEC just like has him in court and they have yes. some meme on uh, a poster that they're showing the judge and this is what enters the history books, just some yeah. some dumb shit. There's a yeah, lot of Elon people Musk who think... Harambe 420, very funny. There's a lot <laughs> of people was, who think... He was think a gorilla that, the, that got shot. ...that the Tesla stock is manipulated, so <laughs> he could be in court. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Um, but I think one... On the one more note on the crypto art stuff, one very interesting thing that I highly recommend checking out is there's this project called Crypto Voxels, which um, is this web VR space where you could buy real estate in the space using NFTs. So basically, each plot of land in the space is a uh, a token and you could buy and sell and trade ownership of this this space but it basically like it looks a lot like um like minecraft and very blocky but mm -hmm. you just have like hundreds and hundreds of people who just own this weird web vr real estate and most of it is devoted to displaying all of the, the crypto art that they've collected. So you have a lot of galleries and museums and just other weird shit there. And it's got, it's got like real web 1.0 vibes in that it's just a, a total clusterfuck of like no one, there's no consistency to like any of uh, the style. And yeah, very graphic design is my passion style. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, some of it, like a lot of it's actually really cool and just seeing all the, the stuff that people have created in this space. And you can easily just like walk around for hours just looking at all the weird architecture and then go inside the buildings and see a bunch of mediocre art and occasionally. How is it connected to crypto though? Because, so I guess the way it works is, um, so what you do in Ethereum is you have these these contracts that are enforced by the Ethereum blockchain. And a contract is basically just a, a module of code that is run in a, a decentralized way. And okay. So you have this idea of a non-fungible token or an NFT, which is basically... No, I can't fung that guy. Yeah. So <laughs> it's... So fungible means that it's... Um, you could exchange it for one another. So, yeah. uh, do so dollars and like stocks and all that stuff, those are fungible commodities because you could. Like how I funged my mouth skills for a promotion at work. Yeah. I, one time I funged in my pants. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, well, I would say both those examples are non fungible actions. You can't fund. <laughs> One blowjob promotion for another blowjob promotion because each blowjob okay. promotion is unique. Uh, I see. So, so each blowjob promotion would be an NFT. 
Yes, if you could trade the blowjob promotion with Steven. Okay. So you give your boss a, bl a BJ, and then now you have this promotion sitting in your hands, and if you were to sell that to Steven, then that would be an NFT. Hmm. So, I totally lost the thread here. So, <laughs> so with the NFT non-fungible, the fungible token. Yeah. So fungible. how do you? What do you do then? So basically, you have these contracts that define all the NFT logic, and what a lot of people are doing these days is they're they're tokenizing art. So you'd upload an image onto the internet somewhere, and then you'd hash the image. And then your contract would say, this Ethereum address owns this specific hash, which refers to this image. And given the logic of the contract, you could swap the ownership of the asset. So if Alex owns some stupid JPEG that I created, he could sell the ownership to, to you, Stephen. And what you have now is you have these very you have these really large exchanges of people buying and selling and just like wheeling and dealing all of this crypto art. Mm -hmm. And what this one guy did, actually I mean, there are a couple of these different spaces, but what the crypto voxels guy did is he set up this gigantic web VR space and he sold plots of land in the web VR space where each plot of land is its own NFT. So, oh, so, I see. so you could go out on the, the broader Ethereum ecosystem and just deal with all these decentralized exchanges and buy and sell crypto voxel real estate. And then if you actually own a plot of land in crypto voxels, you could go onto this website and modify the space to make it look however you want. And you could also display all of the weird crypto NFT art that you have in your art portfolio. So most of this space is basically just museums and galleries of crypto shit. I mean, how large is this community? Um, it's hard to say because I feel like whenever I'm on it, it it seems like there's never more than like a dozen or so people, but every once in a while I'll be on Twitter and someone will be like, whoa, we're having a gallery opening. Everyone click this link. And then you go to this weird gallery opening and you just have all of these mannequins like standing around very stiffly and kind of like floating to like one side and floating to the other side. And there's like one mannequin that just has this gigantic oversized like unicorn and rainbow hat and mm. it's it is very strange but i don't know i mean the space is really large but at any given point in time it's like i feel like usually there's maybe a dozen people on it but if you have an event maybe there'll be a hundred or like 200 or so is the idea mm. that they're gonna grow in value yeah, I mean, it's it's a real estate play like any other investment. So, <laughs> like, what's going on? Oh my god! So the, the imagine if you could own a piece of Warcraft. Yeah, I mean, the the funny thing though is you have a lot of plots of land that were just bought up by speculators, where That's it's so just like lame. yeah, so it's just like there's a lot of plots of land there that are just totally empty, and <laughs> someone someone bought like this plot for an Ethereum which is now at $1,600 and they're literally just sitting on it and not doing anything with it. I really like the idea of someone, we've achieved the singularity and this is this is the world that you upload your personality in to spend, spend <laughs> time in forever. This web 1.0 with a bunch of mannequins and a bunch of furry art, <laughs> a bunch of... <laughs> A bunch of a bunch of big titted furries with uh, the Bitcoin logo for their face. You know, that's all. That's your life now. That's eternity. That's San Junipero. Yeah, I mean, hey, I've I've spent more time than I care to admit, just sort of floating around this space. I think it's cool. It's definitely worth checking out. I think the the value of actually spending money on buying any of this real estate as an investment, I'd say, is questionable. 
No, buy it. Jim Cramer, Mad Money. <laughs> buy it, buy it, buy it, buy it, this buy it. Yeah, we're bullish, coming down on buy show. here, folks. It's a buy. This is, yeah, this is, this is not day. financial advice. I am not a financial advisor. <laughs> Steve is We are financial advisors. Buy. We have our degrees this in financial advice. I got it from the up, University folks. of Big Dick. The bulls uh, have so it. Crypto voxel space. Make Invest sure you put fic- all of your money. Land. Empty that 401k. And Steve, how would, how? I got one question for you now. Um, where can I find the hottest selection of stylish face masks on the internet? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Stephen, because I have this little website called RonaMerch.co that lets you buy any number of incredibly stylish, very well-selling face masks. Yeah, what are some of the mm. kinds of different masks? Like, I see you got like a lot of funny things written on them. Like, what are the th- some of the funny things written on the masks you got on your website? Um, well, I actually sold a mask uh, recently. I sold the one that says "hoax" on it to nice. uh, Sarah from Long Beach, Long Island. Shout out so to Sarah. I have, Sarah. I have no idea Friend who of the pod. Sarah. I have no idea who that is, and I do feel slightly guilty that someone's walking around with. One of my stupid hoax masks in Long Beach. Uh, uh, is she an actual QAnon person? You think? I have no idea. I guess. Uh, guess I'll find out, or maybe I won't. Let's, I'll never find out. Probably. Well, I. Let's hope um, she thought it was funny. I like to buy all of my face masks from Rona Merch. Uh, I like particularly the one that says "Super Spreader" on it because. Oh yeah. <laughs> I am a super spreader. I've spread it to many nursing homes like a ninja yeah do you want everyone to know it? yeah i am i have taken out 47 grandmas oh it's uh, a good yeah. number the fbi is after mm-hmm. me. it's illegal to do it you know it's a actually biological terrorism if i <laughs> if i had actually done that if that was true if, if everything These that i my... had said was true which it is well, it's not hey, like my they... farts are biological terrorism <laughs> oh yeah it's not These like farts they... are so bad <laughs> It's not like they caught you to admit it on a, a popular podcast or anything. But... Ah, man. <laughs> they play such mind tricks. It's crazy. They got me to do it. Oh, thank you, Steve. We are a very popular podcast. Yeah, I, I like an it. Extre- <laughs> an extremely popular podcast. Yeah, well, we're <clears throat> the most popular extreme podcast. It's a new genre. It's called extreme podcasting. Um <clears throat> Extreme. It's yeah. Extreme it's more, podcasting. It's more intense and vigorous. Yeah. This is you. You actually. You you've actually lost a lot of weight by listening to this podcast because you've been vibrating <laughs> very intensely because of the specific frequencies and tones and prompts in our voices. So congratulations. You're it, now a thin and beautiful. But it only works if you're wearing headphones, because then you get the binaural yeah. beats aspect of it. Yeah. It only works if you're wearing a mask from RonaMerch.co. Yeah, so put on your headphones, <laughs> buy a mask on RonaMerch.co, maybe even buy uh, one of my personal favorite items, the hat hat. And if you're wearing all those things, then... <laughs> the hat hat is good. <laughs> you are yeah. guaranteed to lose weight. Have you ever had binaural sex? It's when you get fucked in both ears. Wow. Yeah, I bet you had that. I bet you had that growing up. But you yeah. had a lot of birthday parties. Where you had that. Yeah, they were just they were just stabbing their dicks into my ear holes, hitting my cochleas. Oh man, that ouch. I mean, I feel like that yeah. only works with children though, because I feel like fully grown adult dicks won't fit yeah, into your. You can't get adult dicks in the ears. You can only yeah. do it when you're kids. You know. Yeah. It's, you never did that. You never. You never had binaural sex. No. When, at your birthday parties. I wasn't oh. allowed to. Okay. <laughs> Dark parents. <laughs> uh, Steve, we love you. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Wrap it up. Thanks, Steve. Bye, everybody. Have a, have a great week. See you on Valentine's Day, twenty twenty one. Bye, bye. <laughs> Yay. And that's our...